Welcome to the Rockstar in Life podcast, where you learn the secrets to unleashing your inner rock star so you can make the world your stage. Hey, fellow rock stars in life, Dr. Dan here, and I've got my lovely co host, Siri Shakti, in the house. What's up, everyone? That's right. So today, <laughs> we're going to be talking about something that's happening right now, right? Yep. It is currently happening. <laughs> it is currently happening. And you probably didn't even know it's happening. That's right. Some of you might, some of you might not. Yes. And I, you know, I, okay, I know I say this a lot. This is my favorite thing to talk about, but, but they're actually, all our favorite. They're That's all our why. favorite. But this is something that I love talking about with people. And it's something that I just started learning about a few years ago. I always picked up on the different feelings that each season has. And I know, you know, when, when I, I'm sure that you've experienced this, when you have a change of, of season, like for instance, we just moved into springtime, there's just something in the air, you know, there's a different quality, like a different energy to it. And, um, you know, like for instance, when we, anytime we'd start, you know, coming into um, autumn, I would always say to my mom, I feel the autumn in the air. I want to go, you know, make some pumpkin pies and things like that. Well, being that we're now into spring, I'm sure that many of you are having this sensation of, you know, wanting to get outside more. I know some of you live in areas where you haven't really gotten to experience it yet because there's still snow on the ground and it's still raining and things like that. But over the next few weeks, you're going to see that shift as we move further into spring. Yeah, the winter months, I just get depressed. I know. <laughs> I'm like tired and because, you know, it's because it sucks. It's hard here in Southern California when it reaches, you know, like 50 degrees or 55. I know. And that's insane. And we have to stay indoors. We can't even leave the house. Yeah. <laughs> 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Those are the cold days. I mean, I know yeah. some some evenings it can hit like 45 or something like that. Yeah. And I know a lot of you that don't live in California are like scratching your head and just going, you don't know the <laughs> blizzards we've had here in New York or on the East Coast or you know yes. anywhere else in yes. the world. <laughs> I've been seeing pictures of some of my friends on the East Coast and they're, it's like covered with snow right now. So I think we have it pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, but that would be fun. I mean, I would like some snow, like maybe like, I don't know, like maybe like a few days, like three days. Like every month would yeah. be cool. That you can plan for it. And you can just like press a button and then that then it's snowing. Have a little talk with Mother Nature, see if we can get that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what we're gonna be discussing today is something called the spring equinox. And so, you know, the spring equinox is, and just to kind of get a little bit more into it. There's actually two equinoxes each year. There's one in March and there's one, and actually the one in March is usually around like the 21st. And then there's one in September, which is around the 22nd. And the an equinox is when the sun is the closest to the equator. And then we have something called a solstice, which we also have two times a year. We have one in the summer, it's a summer solstice, and we have one that's the winter solstice. And that's actually when the sun is furthest away from the equator. So right now we're experiencing the closeness of the sun. And this particular equinox, the spring equinox, there's a specific name for it. It's called the vernal equinox. And the vernal equinox is all about warmth and light and birth and rebirth. And I mean, really, I mean, it makes sense. You know, when you think of spring, you think of that, you know, the rebirth, you see birds chirping everywhere, you know, baby birds being hatching and butterflies and bees, you know, pollinating and there's this sensation for most of us, I know this is how I feel, that I want to get outside more. I want to be in the sunlight and, and also be more active. And so, you know, the reason that we want to talk about this is because, you know, just like our last episode where we discussed um, the, the Mercury. Um, Mercury, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Mercury, Mars. Yeah, Mar Mars, yeah. <laughs> Mercury in retrograde. These types of things that happen with our planet and with the, you know, our solar system and these affect us as human beings. They're not just things that happen outside of us. We're a part of the natural world. And so 
we want to educate you of, you know, what's happening right now on our planet. So that way you can utilize it very powerfully um, over these next few months while we're, while we're experiencing spring. Yeah. I mean, think of it as like, if, if you play games and those challenge games, I mean, it, it's really helpful to see a map of where you need to go, like to complete a mission. If you're playing one of those kind of mission based type games, or, you know, even in life, like if you are a, you know, a runner or, you know, if you're a race car driver, or if you, you do anything, anything that, you know, it's, it's helpful to kind of like see or take some test runs on what you're doing. So, you know, the conditions of what's going on, or if you're sailing to know what the weather's going to be like, because you got to prepare for it. That's right. And if there's a storm, you don't really want to get on a boat if there's a storm coming and you can help it. Right. Right. Unless you've got like a death wish, death wish. So, you know, knowing, you know, about, you know, Mars, not Mars, uh, Mercury, I did it to myself <laughs> now, Mercury in retrograde um, and knowing about, you know, the fall and, and the spring equinox and, and uh, the summer salt, solstice and all those things. Um, it's helpful to know these things so you can prepare for them better yes. and, and, you know, and, and prepare for, pre- prepare yourself for success. Yeah, absolutely. And what I love about learn when I started learning about this is that there's things that you can do, and we're going to get to that in a, in a few minutes, that you can do with each of these events to propel yourself powerfully into, you know, you know, in, in your life and really utilize the power of, of what's happening. And, and I, you know, that's really the art of being a human, right, is tapping into these forces that, that we're a part of, that we're not separate from whatsoever. Yeah, I mean... Every, every other species that I can think of prepares for these things. Yeah. You know, like bears will go hibernate when it's time, right? Yeah. You know, bats, bees, flowers, mm-hmm. plants. I mean, flowers will bloom and, and hibernate themselves. Yeah. They all prepare. I mean, it would be dumb for a, you know, for a flower to not hibernate in the cold months because then it would die. And it knows this. And, you know, same thing goes for human nature. We're (laughs) the only ones that force it out. It's like, you know, hey, let's build, let's build a house, you know, where, where, where where we have tornadoes, Mm -hmm. you know, and hurricanes or, you know, let's, let's build a house in, in the middle of, you know, below, you know, temperatures. (laughs) It's like, you need to prepare for it. You know, if, if you live, like in Alaska or, or somewhere that gets below zero, it would not be too smart for you to live in a tent, would it? No. <laughs> you could do it, but it's not very smart. Not during the cold time, right? right. Yeah. I mean, w- when it's warmer, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. But you would need to prepare and pack up that tent and, you know, and either fly or, or you know, or, or drive somewhere that it gets warmer yeah. or, you know, or get an insulated house with a fireplace. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so the word, you know, every, all these words that we have, you know, the, you know, like equinox, solstice, they have meaning. The word equinox comes, it's actually a Latin word, and it means equality of night and day. And the equinox is the time that the sun actually crosses the Earth's equator from south to north and it's the one of only two times in the year when the day and night are equal in length. You know, and obviously that makes sense. That's why in Latin it means equality of night and day. So I love learning, you know, like where our words came from, you know, because most of our words, they have deep roots. And so I thought that was a beautiful example. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So what I want to get into first is I wanted to share with you, like, you know, when I was researching this, I was curious to see how people around the world, how different cultures around the world currently celebrate and acknowledge the the spring solstice in their own way. And so I'd like to just go over a few examples of that. So celebrating the spring equinox you know, in Korea and Japan, they do it by remembering family members. And they actually visit their graves, and it's very common in the Asian countries to do this. So while we, you know, in our Western society, we actually think of the spring equinox oftentimes as a celebration of new life, well, you can see that for them in Asia, it's also a time to remember those that have passed. So it's a celebration of life altogether, you know, even if it had already passed. 
And also, and this one, you know, we know a little bit about because I know, Dan, you're half Persian. So growing up, you always celebrated the Persian New Year, right? With your family? Yeah, because we always got money. (laughs) So that was cool. I like money. (laughs) Well, the first day of spring also marks the beginning of the Persian New Year. (laughs) And this is a deeply rooted celebration that dates back over 3,000 years of tradition. So that's... You know, this is not something recent that people have been celebrating. (laughs) Yeah. Then this is one that really is dear to my heart. I want to go here so badly. I want to visit England and I want to go to um, Stonehenge. And every year for the the, um, spring equinox, they set the the pagans and the druids, they, they march to Stonehenge. And they celebrate it by watching the sun rise above the stones. And they do, you know, beautiful ceremonies and have flowers and and people get all dressed up. And it's just absolutely beautiful. So at one point, we're going to be doing that, right? Awesome. Let's do it. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And then this one's kind of funny. This is a lesser known celebration. And it's considerably more, you know, uh, modern day one. This was created in the 1970s in a neighborhood in Maryland. And it's kind of funny. Yacht club members, they shed and burn their socks in celebration of springtime. Now, I didn't find any information of why exactly they chose socks. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe because they look at it as like, oh, now we don't need socks with our our boat shoes. (laughs) We can wear flip-flops now. Celebration of flip-flop weather. What are those called? Like dockers or something? (laughs) Or those are pants. But they had like those boat shoes. I forgot what they called. I don't know. I'd have to consult my boat friends that sail. Talk to them. Yeah. I think we'll just call them boat shoes. Yeah. But I just thought that was kind of funny. Yep. So maybe we should start doing that. We'll burn our socks. No, it's hard to get. Equinox. No, it's hard to get like like really good socks. Like whenever I find them, and you know this, yeah. whenever I find good socks, then I go buy like a bunch of them. So I have like a hundred <laughs> pairs of the ones that I like because eventually they wear out and sometimes they stop making those. Right. And so I always want to. And plus, you guys always steal my socks, so I always buy extra. I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. I never steal your socks. I know. <laughs> Actually, it's funny. I do. And now everyone else in the family steals your socks. Well, now everybody listening knows too. Yep. Yep. You're on notice. (laughs) Busted. So that's just a few examples of, you know, some different ways of celebrating. And I know for me, around this time of year, I like to do things like put out flowers I like to light candles, like burn incense. Burn incense. Well, you which do that all year. You love, right? Yeah, all year long. <laughs> you love my incense. It's always a surprise smell through the house. Yes. Y'all, <laughs> what is that? I'm all, is that an incense or did somebody die? <laughs> smells like a decomposing body. I'm which like, one is it? It's sacred. It smells beautiful. Okay. Like a temple. <laughs> okay. One of these days we're going to have a dead body in the house and I'm not going to know. I'm going to be like, yeah. I thought that was an incense. <laughs> One thing I love to do as well is doing sage. And we'll get into this a little at the end when I talk about some of the things that you well, can do yourself. Well, some people that don't know what sage is, can you kind of explain what that yeah. is? So sage is an, is an herb and it's used in, it's been used for so long in ancient traditions and Native Americans. And you Americans. smoke it, right? You put it in a bong and you smoke it? No. No, don't no. do that. <laughs> you, you light it and you go around the house. It looks like and, a bush in your hand is what it looks like. It kind of reminds me of like... Not that it looks like it, but it reminds me of like mistletoe, like you're walking around. It doesn't look like mistletoe, but it's like you're walking around with a bushel of mistletoe and you're burning it. It's my burning bush. Your burning bush, <laughs> yes. Burn your but bushes. But I go around the house and and it helps to cleanse the home of any stagnant energy. I mean, some people believe that it gets rid of like bad spirits and things like that. But yeah, No, it's um, great. Even if you had like a lot of negativity or whatever, yeah. if we've ever had anybody visit and we're like, man, they really just suck the energy out of yeah. us, then you can, yeah, you can just light it and either go through the whole house or the rooms that they were in. Yeah. And, so and, it's great. So you don't have to just wait till like spring or no, you can do it anytime or, we do. I do it throughout the year and, you can even add like beautiful like incantations or little prayers as you're walking around. I mean, it's you can just create it the way that you want it. I do it every time my wife yeah. leaves the house. <laughs> she just looked at me like, "All right, <laughs> we're gonna have to have a little talk after this." <laughs> <Sounds good. laughs> yeah, yes, that'll be in the deleted scenes of this. <laughs> 
And something else that I wanted to share with you when I was researching this beautiful topic of spring equinox is I'm fascinated with how the ancient traditions of how, you know, our, our ancient ancestors would celebrate this. And there's actually so many more examples than what I'm going to give right here, but I just gave the top five that I was like, oh, this is so cool. So the Mayans um, in South America have also been known for their reverence of the equinox, always. You know, they would have, you know, great celebrations. They constructed the temple, and I'm going to do my best to say this word. I looked it up, and I think I'm saying it right. It's Cococon. Co Co no, yeah, Cococon. <laughs> and so it was a sacred temple, which was designed in such a way that only on the equinox, the sun would, it would shine into the temple a certain way, and it would project a serpent, the image of a serpent onto the walls. And you know, the, the image of a serpent is such a powerful symbolism, and it's been used for so long as a symbol of transformation and rebirth. So you, you can see how they go hand in hand. And then the Celtic tradition, which I'm totally fascinated with and love research, researching, they have their folklore, of course. And it was said that the equinox was the only day of the year when an egg could be, could be stood on its end which honestly, I don't even think that's possible, but you know, we can appreciate the story. <laughs> and again, just like the, the snake is a powerful symbol for rebirth, of course, the egg is a perfect symbol of springtime, of new beginnings, of rebirth. Yeah, the, you know, the hatching of the egg. That's really beautiful. And, you know, archaeologically, there is so much evidence that suggests that people have been have been admiring and decorating eggs long before Easter ever ever came into play. And, you know, the egg remains fairly, fairly common around the world. And it's used as a symbol, you know, in so many different traditions as that symbol of new life and rebirth and things like that. And in the pre-Christian Europe, which is like the Anglo-Saxons, they worshipped a beautiful goddess named Ostara. And I love learning about this. And Ostara was traditionally seen, and you'll notice, like if you look it up on, on Google, you'll see she's this beautiful goddess and she's holding eggs. And she's usually standing next to um, a sacred symbol, which is the rabbit. And you know, she was a symbol of, of fertility. She was the moon goddess. And so that was, um, you know, their goddess that they worshipped all the time, but especially during this time of the, the spring equinox. Yeah. Hmm. So she didn't like boil eggs and color them and, no. <laughs> and hide Easter egg baskets and do an Easter egg hunt? She wasn't. And, you know, I don't know too much about this. I mean, I have read a little bit here and there, but a lot of the the things that we consider to be part of Easter are in fact very old symbolisms and and traditions that were used by the Anglo Saxons and the you know the the Celtic traditions that were later on adopted by the early Christians and um, you know so I I find that to be so beautiful you know we we tend to think that everything that we celebrate is just like, you know, this is how it always was. And this is, you know, but that's, you know, even like Christmas, I know we've talked about so many of the traditions in Christmas um, date back. So, you know, their roots are so tied in ancient traditions that didn't even come really from the, the Christian uh, religion. So I, I highly suggest that you you do a little bit of research yourself and and learn about things like this because it for me it only adds more beauty in in knowing where things were rooted and it gives me more of a feeling of reverence for any symbolism that i that i use in my traditions and my holidays and things like that yeah and learning is good yeah yep yeah always be learning yes well what do we always say um whatever is not learning or growing is dying yeah if you're not growing then what are you doing you're dying yeah <laughs> so always be growing which is learning and yes cool yes. stuff like that yes well being that we've discussed that you know this you know the the idea of the the changing of season 
is a part of you. Well, we want to discuss a little bit about what are some things that we can do to honor the the spring equinox within ourselves. And when I think of the spring equinox, it is a perfect time to set new intentions because, you know, things are blossoming, things are renewing, it's that rebirth. And so what I like to do around this time of year is I think about what are my goals for this next part of my life, for this next, you know, these next few months? And if you're someone that enjoys practicing yoga or meditation, I like to choose a new meditation or something new in my yoga practice. And you can go ahead and practice it for, well, as long as you want. But if you practice it for 40 days, then it becomes a part of you, it becomes a new habit. So I highly suggest that you you choose some sort of new practice that you want to implement. Yeah. Nice. I know quite a few people, um, I was reading that a lot of people like to do um, cleanses. Right. Like they like to go detox and do a cleanse during the equinox because um, it's believed, and I, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't look into the science on this, but it's believed that it affects the thickness of the blood and it makes it thinner. And when it's thinner, you know, even just a little bit, just slightly, it's a good time to cleanse because the blood moves faster and therefore it speeds the elimination of toxin, toxins. Wow, that is so cool. That was something that I just learned today. I mean, I, um, you know, as we were learning about this and when you said that, I was like, oh, I want to go on a cleanse now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I bet it'd be pretty interesting to see when we've done cleanses because I would actually you know, bet that we probably did them around those times because right. we just felt the urge to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's funny that you said that because today when I was thinking about what I wanted to make for dinner and I'm like, let's just order some pizza because it's easier. But I felt like my body was like calling to have healthy foods, like water rich foods. So I guess I should listen to that. Then. Yeah. I usually never turned on pizza and I did. Yeah. I said, I want something healthy. Yeah. <laughs> so I ate pizza. You ate something healthy. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. And I encourage you very much to, I mean, to, you know, really get outside more. I mean, do some earthing, do some earthing, get, get your body moving more. You know, you don't have to like overly push yourself, but get outside and go on some walks, maybe go on a hike. Um, Something I enjoy doing is going and buying some new pots and planting some new flowers or vegetable garden. Um, oh, of course, spring cleaning, right? Yeah. Well, actually, the meditations and the yoga and prayer and things like that, I consider that the internal spring cleaning. So you can do that. But also, there's a reason why people traditionally clean their homes, like really clean their homes during spring. It's because you want to Cleanse your home, get rid of clutter, dust, and and have that feeling of lightness. You know, just like when you go outside, you feel that feeling of lightness in the air. We want that in our homes as well. Yeah, I mean, this morning I I actually felt the urge. I grabbed the yoga mat and I actually did it on the balcony. That's you know? so cool. And then and I didn't know you were out there, and I let the dog out, and he was barking like crazy. Yeah, it made it really fun for you. Fortunately, that was towards <laughs> the end. So I was sorry. Uh, every day, yeah, I was like, I was like meditating. I'm like, yeah, feels good. Yes. No, Django, stop, stop barking, stop. We were testing you to see how you could focus. Yeah, well, I was pretty focused. So <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Yeah. So get outside, do some yoga, do some meditations. Mm -hmm. You know, go swim in a lake in the ocean. You know, mm -hmm. get your your feet at least in the sand. Yes, yes. In the water, cleanse your home. One thing I've been I've been listening to some other uh, podcasts recently about minimalism, and eventually I do want to talk about that. Although we are not minimalists ourselves, I'm very interested in it because one thing I've heard many times over the years is that. Oh, the, uh, everything that you own holds on to energy. And so the more things that you own holds on to more f emotion and, and energy that oftentimes can, can hinder you in a way. And yeah. I, I feel that. Like when we go out into our garage, we have a lot of things in there. I feel like cluttered and you know internally kind of frustrated by it. So this past week I've started cleaning out things and um, – you know, it's a slow process, but I'm already seeing like the difference of how it's going to be when I achieve uh, what I'm, what my goal is for our home. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
Well, is there anything else you'd like to add before we move on to our rock star mission? No, I'm good. I, I think we should get into the rock star mission. But before we do, I want to remind you to go to rockstarinlife.com. You know, for links to the resources mentioned, this episode's transcript, download the free books, training, yoga, meditation, homeschooling advice, and so much more being added every single week. Go to rockstarlife.com and join the Rockstar in Life revolution today. Awesome. All right. So for our Rockstar mission, I'm going to touch on what we just finished with, which was how we are going to access, you know, and, and work with, um, the spring equinox on, you know, on a very personal level. And so there's two parts to this. Number one, I mentioned the internal spring cleaning. So that has to do with doing like meditation, doing yoga, um, maybe even just sitting for a few moments each day and having some quiet time to, to reflect, you know, where you're, you're not being um, interrupted, things like that. So that is that internal spring cleaning. So I want you to pick one thing that you're going to start doing over this next month, you know, next 30 days, that's going to help you with your internal world. And so after you've done that, next is working on your external world. So, the the external world would be like getting outside, going out and exercising, you know, out outside. We'd be going and earthing or going on hikes. Um, it would be maybe things like spring cleaning your home. Um, yeah, things like that. So that's in the external world. So I want you to choose one of those, thi- those things that is going to help you. Oh, I, I forgot the cleanse. That would be yep. another one. Yep. Yeah. So I want you to choose one of those that's going that you feel is going to help you with this transition of moving into spring and and working with the this uh, spring equinox. Yep. Unless you want to be an overachiever, which we know you do, yes. and you want to do multiple. Heck yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm already thinking, let's go on a cleanse and let's clean our home. <laughs> yep. So at least choose one or two of those things. Yes. I'll say one or two um, and more if you are an overachiever and you yeah. really want to rock this equinox. That's right. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, this was beautiful. And don't forget to get out there and be a rock star in your life. Make the world your stage. Thanks for listening to Rockstar in Life, your source for unleashing your inner rock star. For more tips, training and free stuff, be sure to go to rockstarinlife.com and join the Rockstar in Life revolution today. Thanks again, and don't forget to make the world your stage.